Kevin Ocello of Fieldcraft Survival. I want to discuss what is referred to as our pace plan in relation to water. Guys, water's life. People talk about it all the time. Our body is mostly water. And in an environment like this in the Pacific Northwest, when water is pretty much everywhere, you think it's safe to drink, but the reality is not so much. To make water safe to drink, to treat water, we're going to apply our PACE principle. The PACE principle, just to recap, is primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency methods of treating water. You got to be very careful with the word purify water and filter water because those options may not necessarily make water safe to drink. We're going to treat water to make it safe to drink regardless of the method that's used. So we want to treat water from untreated to treated. You have to be very careful to drink only treated water or else you will explode from both ends. More professionally, I'll say there are a lot of nasty things that you can find in water, Giardia, cryptosporidium. So we want to make sure that we take untreated water, treat it, and make it safe to drink. Out here in the Pacific Northwest, where you have a lot of water, everything is wet and it's easy to cross-contaminate. And I want to point that out before I go through my four methods of treating our water. Cross-contamination is when you allow a single drop of untreated water into your treated water. Keep in mind, what can do you harm? What can do damage to you are microscopic organisms that can exist in a single drop of water. It's not like you have to down an entire bottle to get sick from water. A single drop will do it. So you have to be very careful of cross-contamination. And when you gather your water, it's not a bad idea to have a treated bottle in an untreated container, which you can transfer eventually treated water into the bottle. Don't cross-contaminate. Develop a system, find something that works for you, and you'll travel in the backcountry much safer. Now, as far as the four methods that I'm going to recommend. I am a diehard fan of boiling water. When you boil water, you have to achieve big bubbles, not little bubbles. It's very tempting to see little bubbles forming and saying, hey, bubbles mean boiling, but that's not the case. Little bubbles are not a roaring boil. A roaring boil can be defined as big bubbles that when you stir the pot with a stick or your knife or whatever, you're not stopping that boiling. It's gonna continue boiling. So boiling is my number one, my go-to, but in an environment like this, it's very difficult to get fires going. Not impossible, but difficult, which is why boiling may not necessarily be my primary out here in something like a filter bottle or a pump filter could be my primary instead. So whether this is my primary or my alternate, the filter bottle is one of my preferred ways of treating water because this particular one is a grail. What you do is you have a container that has untreated water. And as you utilize this, like a French press, it pushes through a one-way valve treated water into the bottle. And it takes a good amount of force to push this. Actually, they advise you to, to put it below and use your body weight to push it. But as I'm pushing this down, it's pushing the water through that one-way valve. And by the time that I get all the way to the bottom here, this water is safe to drink right from the container. So purifying bottles, there's a trade-off as well. Even the grill, which is a, a high-end bottle, it's not recommended that you allow these to freeze. Out here last night, we were in the mid thirties, not below freezing, so I didn't have to worry about it. But this is not my preferred method for traveling to frozen climates because what happens with a filter bottle or anything that has a semi-porous membrane, that membrane gets wet. And as we know, when water freezes, ice expands and it can break the membrane, which would allow untreated water to go into our treated vessel. You gotta be very careful with that. The other thing is they're kind of bulky, but with something like this that has a titanium container, I can boil in this if I had to, if I ever broke that. Not a bad option. My contingency method for treating water is something that you might be familiar with if you've seen me do the 72 hour Ziploc bag challenge, and those are aqua tabs. Aqua tabs are one of the tablet methods of treating water. There's chlorine, there are MP1 tablets, there are aqua tabs, and they all have different directions for what you need to do with them. Some like these, you mix them for 10 minutes and then let it react for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, you're good to go to drink the water. Some tablets take longer. Some tablets are light sensitive, like iodine. Tablets are a great option, but they do run out. Everything's a trade-off. The other thing is these tablets come in paper packets, which out in this environment where everything is so damn damp, that's going to potentially compromise the tablet. 
Tablets are a great option, especially if you can't boil, if you're traveling somewhere like the high desert where there's a fire ban and they say no fires, or maybe you find water and you have a mechanical injury where you can't push the filter. Tablets are a great option in case you're, you're weak. Your final option, your emergency option might not be the greatest one, but you can use a rag on this type of moss. You can collect off of ferns as long as you're not accessing water, moisture from plants that are toxic. You don't want to collect water off of poison oak, shumac, or poison ivy. That's a bad, bad idea. You can collect off the land if you have to. I would still recommend treating that water. I wouldn't necessarily drink it untreated, but there may come a time where you have no other option. If you're about to die of dehydration and you need water and you know that there's an un treated source and you're either going to die of dehydration or you're going to drink that maybe get a few more hours and rescue will come and save you drink the treated water if it's an absolute last ditch there's always a treatment for what you could get there's no treatment that i know of for death. water is a great resource it's something that you have to address in a survival scenario we know based on the rule of threes you can live approximately three days without water but realize that you're not going to have the same function the same capability that whole 72 hours if you are not drinking water it's going to be diminishing returns every single day so establish a good pace plan for collecting water, treating water, carrying water, and consuming water. Make sure that you are hydrated every single day. Make sure that you are looking out for your safety because something so microscopic can affect us on such a grand scale. That is my pace plan for water. Boil, filter, tablet, and emergency source off the land. Hopefully you never need to get to that emergency method and you'll choose one of the three methods that I described earlier and adopt it for your pace plan. Guys, I am Kevin Estello, Fieldcraft Survival. Thank you so much for watching.